The one cool thing about all Teslas is that you have an amazing app that allows you to literally control your car with your finger. It's like that James Bond movie with Pierce Brosnan a long time ago, where he's able to control his BMW with his car. Other car manufacturers like Rivian do have apps for their car, but honestly, it's just not as good as Tesla's. So when you get your Tesla, one of the most important and overlooked feature of the car is the Tesla app. It connects to your car with Bluetooth and it allows so much more control and customization. So today I'm gonna go into a deep dive on the features and how to make the Tesla app unique in your own way. What is up guys, it's Chris with Every Chris and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys subscribe and as always, hit that like button. So starting off, if you have an iPhone, one cool thing that you can do with the Tesla is have a widget on your lock screen. So to customize that, all you have to do is unlock your iPhone, then hold anywhere on the screen. Then you can pop up a wallpaper, customize it, go to the lock screen. You can choose to have just the small icon or a full icon. As long as it's unlocked, you can click that and it immediately pops up on the home screen. You also have a widget for iPhones. And that one is really cool. So you can easily customize all this stuff. And to do that is very simple. You just hold on anywhere on the screen. You have a plus icon, you press plus. We're gonna scroll all the way down until we see Tesla. We could customize a small square or a big square if we wanted to. The big square is nice because it has way more info. Then we just add the widget. Once you add the widget, you have all these options. You have your quick commands. So you can easily open the front, lock the door without even technically opening the Tesla app, which is awesome and you can quickly access any Tesla settings by just clicking it. So when you open the Tesla app, we get the main screen. It looks pretty basic. Real quick, as you can see, my car is like this sexy Tiffany blue color. You can customize and change the car color to any car color you want. You can even make it matte, metallic, silver, anything through the Tesla screen. And when you do that, it'll immediately reflect on the Tesla app, which is really cool. Right now, the Tesla is parked and we have a feature live camera sentry mode enabled, which I'll go over in a second. You get the name of your car on the upper left. It even includes the emoji icon, which is cool. Underneath it, you have the percentage as well as your status of your gear shifter. So right now it's in park. One cool feature if you didn't know is if you want to see how many miles your car has instead of percentage, you can easily click it and it changes to miles instead of percentage, and it reflects on the Tesla screen as well. You have a loot chest and your profile icon on the upper right. Underneath your car, you have the beautiful icons. As you can see, I have five icons, but I'll discuss that in a second. So you see this image here, it looks like it's a still image, but what's cool is it changes based on the status of the car. So let's just say we open the charge port. It shows up in the car right there. It's very small, but you can kind of see that there. And when you drive, your car animation changes again with the wheels going faster on highway speeds and slower at low speeds. And already the wheels are moving slowly at one miles per hour. When you are driving, you get a different menu here where you can control the music as well as the volume. Now I'm sure you've seen by now a lot of cool features like the ability to pop your car door open if there's ice buildup. A few of these are located in the menus below. However, a lot of the features are actually located in the quick actions menu, but a lot of people don't realize that you can actually customize these icons here. So listen up, this is super important. By default, they only allow four icons, but you can add a fifth one if you wanted to, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So in order to customize the icons, all you have to do is hold it, and you have all these icons you can customize. You can use the unlatch door function. You can start the car remotely. You can flash the lights. You have bio defense mode, honk the horn, all these functions. Now it's a little tricky. You have to have a little bit of finesse and precision and you can't have big fat fingers like me because it makes it a little bit more challenging. But in order to add a fifth icon, all you simply have to do is drag the icon, so hold the icon to drag. And you can't go up here because we're gonna replace it, but you have to go around the outside, making sure it doesn't touch any icon. See, it's tough. I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is the tough one. This is probably the hardest part. So we're holding it, dragging it on the outside. Oh, didn't get it. We're gonna go here. There, see that gray icon right there? We did it. There you go. Yeah, it's because I have a case on. If you have a case on, I recommend taking off the case so you have more space so you can go all the way to the edge. 
But there you go, right there. I did it. Now I have five icons. But yes, remove your case if you have a case. So let's talk about controls first. When you click it, you get an overhead view of your car that's all updated again in real time. If you turn the brake lights on, it shows the brake lights on. If the climate is on, you can see the air waves. Same with opening the door or connecting the charge port. In the center, you can quickly lock or unlock your car. Open the front, open the trunk, open the charge port. And at the bottom, you have a few quick commands like flashing the lights, honking the horn, remote starting the car, which is a super nifty feature. And if you have Homelink enabled, you can open and close your garage door with Homelink. A recent feature they added was the ability to view your last known tire pressure or your current tire pressure if you're in the car, which is super awesome. It also tells you the recommended tire pressure at the top. I was getting my flat tire fixed from America's Tires and it sent me a notification that my tire pressure was really low. So that's another awesome feature. Also, if you live in another area and you wanna switch from PSI to bar, all you have to do is go to the Tesla menu screen. From there, you can switch from PSI to bar, or even if you want it from centimeters to inches, you can do that there as well. Next up is climate. Under the climate tab, it shows you if dog mode is on, camp mode, or if the climate is on as well as the interior temperature. When you click it, you get a live animation. So you can definitely see that the air is on. You can control the heated steering wheel. You can control the heated seats. Under here, you can quickly adjust the climate. You can turn off the climate. You can vent the windows. That is a feature that has been in all the tests in the past. However, due to recent regulations, they removed it in the newer cars. But good news, they are gonna be bringing it back. So keep that in mind. You can vent it and you can also close the windows, which is cool. When you swipe up, you get much more options like quickly defrosting the car, bioweapon defense mode, camp mode, and dog mode. They also added this awesome feature. This one does drain the battery. And a lot of times if someone's parking long-term at an airport or something and they forgot to turn off this feature on the Tesla menu screen, it will slowly drain the battery. However, now they can easily just go to the app and turn off cabin overheat protection, which is cool. If you have dog mode enabled, you can quickly view the interior camera. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can do all this stuff here. One cool thing is the location is extremely accurate. The red arrow shows exactly where your car is. At the upper right, you can click it and quickly get directions to your car. If you're looking somewhere else, you can easily center the vehicle and you can switch from map mode or geography mode. I love the geography mode the best because it just kind of gives you more detail of where the car is exactly. So you could creep on anybody. It shows you where they're going, shows you where they are. From the bottom, you can actually swipe up and view nearby superchargers, or you can simply just move the map out and kind of see where the superchargers are in the area. It shows you how busy the supercharger is at what time, which is a cool feature. That's something new. So it kind of shows you at 10 a.m., some charges available. One cool thing is you can now send point of interest from the Tesla app directly to your Tesla. Before the only way was to open Google Maps and then I'd have to put in, let's just say this one, go up and then share it with the Tesla. But now let's just say I wanted to do Fashion Island. It knows exactly where it is and I can send it to the car. It also tells you how much battery you'll have left when you arrive, so 59%. This is how much battery I have, and then I'll arrive here. It's very similar to another app that I have, which is called a Better Route Planner. I really like it because it fine tunes everything for you. It tells you exactly what supercharger you stop at, shows you the superchargers available. However, with Tesla, it's very similar, but they kind of just choose the superchargers for you. So if I go to Las Vegas, it tells me where I have to charge. It wants me to charge at Barstow. I'll arrive with 5% battery. However, it does not let me choose different superchargers, which sucks. But still a huge improvement. You can send it to the car still, pretty awesome. One cool thing is if you're on navigation, it'll show up what time you'll arrive. And it'll tell me that I'll arrive at 7.45 a.m. The next one is super cool and it works at allowing you to easily bring your car forward or backward in a tight parking spot. Or if you have enhanced or full self-driving, it allows the car to come to you or a certain location if you're nearby. When in enhanced summon mode, it stops for cars, stops for pedestrians. It even tells you in the app what it's trying to do. If you want to enable the feature where you don't need to hold the arrow when the car is going forward or backward, you can do that through the Tesla screen as well. You can also set a setting where the garage door can open and close itself if you have the Homelink feature. 
This schedule tab is really cool because it allows you to create a schedule based on your location. So it's location specific. So let's just say you're at home, you wanna have a schedule where you depart at a certain time, you wanna precondition the battery, you wanna have off peak charging, you can do that. Or if you're at work and you just wanna charge right away, you can set a schedule there. This feature is very useful if you wanna make sure you charge on off peak times. So for me, my most expensive rates is between four to 9 p.m. So I make sure my off peak end time is 3.45 p.m. So it doesn't charge during four to nine and it kind of just figures it out on its own. You can set the climate and preheat the battery. Pretty much what you see in the Tesla menu screen, they integrated it really well in the Tesla app. When your car is charging, you can easily customize the charge limit. You can also customize the amps as well. And at the end, it also tells you how many kilowatts you've consumed. So for this charging trip, it took me 29 kilowatt hours. You can unlock the charge port, you could stop charging as well. So now it's charging and it just, just it reflects everywhere. Climate, so, so it's charging as well. So when you're in parked and in sentry mode, you get quick access below your quick controls. And this is the area where any software notification updates appear as well. With sentry mode on, you can click the quick access and it immediately pops up the live cameras. Again, to view these cameras, you need Tesla premium subscription. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer depending on your cellular service with your Tesla. From here, you can press the gray dots to view your Tesla and what's going on. A new feature that they added, at first they only allowed it with dog mode, but you can now view the interior camera when no one's in the car. It even shows you the interior temperature, 72 degrees. However, the cameras won't work if the door is open or if someone is in the car. If sentry mode's on, of course, it'll record everything. When you're in this menu, you have the ability to honk the horn, flash the lights, fart, or even use the microphone. Which allows you to talk to people outside of the car in this cool Darth Vader voice. <laughs> So there you go, you saw that sentry mode just turned on because it detected somebody. And we're gonna see what she's up to. Where'd she go? It doesn't tell you when it detects an event. It only shows up on the Tesla screen, but you could always just have it open and see what's going on, which is cool. When you click on the red icon at the top, you go to the security and drivers menu where you could turn sentry mode off, turn on valet mode, turn on speed limit mode, as well as manage your drivers. I talk about valet mode and all that fun stuff and how to set up your phone as a key and one of my quick tips. So check that out if you're interested in that. Now, one cool feature is manage drivers. And this is the ability where you can add drivers on the fly. It's actually kind of scary because it's so easy to add a driver. All you have to do is click add driver, generate an invite and send it to whoever you want. As long as they have the Tesla app and a Tesla account, they can easily control access to your car, which is insane. The next one is charge stats, which is really cool. When you click on it, it kind of shows you a rundown of how much you're spending on charging. Now, if you don't have that tab, it's probably because you're a driver and you're not the owner of the car. So that's why that tab isn't there. It's a rather new feature. It allows you to see how much you're saving based off of the local rates in your area. You can hard press it to see a certain day. So Sunday I charged 49 kilowatt hours and I spent $9. But how does it know how much everything is? Everything is customizable. So you just have to go to settings and I just click here and then this is my rate plan. You can customize the seasons because the seasons always change. So I customized that. I did have to fine tune it a little bit because it wasn't completely accurate. So I went to SCE, I looked at how much everything cost and you can kind of see here my peak price, 46 cents between four to 9 p.m. You can customize work, other as well. You can change time of use from kilowatt hours to percentage. During the last 30 days, I didn't charge at a supercharger. I charged at home and I spent $86. This is a cool feature. It estimates the gas savings based on the current gas prices in your area. You can see that it lists how much the average gas prices were for that year. And then it just kind of calculates everything and says I saved around $3,600. It's not 100% accurate, but it's still nice to know where the data is coming from and how much I'm kind of saving. Even have like a charging tip section on how to save money. So that's something cool too. Now under upgrades, it'll show you all the stuff that you can kind of upgrade. So if you have any software upgrades, like if you want to upgrade to full self-driving, or if you have the Model Y, you want to add acceleration boost, you can do that there. If you have a subscription, 
then you can go ahead and manage that as well. They have a new feature called extended service agreement. So if you're under the 50,000 mile mark, you can add this to cover yourself for an additional two years or 25,000 miles. I didn't think it was very necessary because it is expensive, it's $2,000. The majority of expensive stuff like a battery placement is covered under their 120,000 mile warranty. So I didn't have to worry about that. Most of the stuff is cheaper, so I don't think it's gonna cost $2,000 to repair. So we're probably not gonna get that. But if you wanted to, you can go ahead and do that there. You can also get your accessories here if you wanted to. And that's that. Now the next one is super important. This is the service menu, and this is where you go to to input any service request that you have. You can view the history. They have video guides that kind of teach you the basics on the Tesla, or you can just watch my video on that. Also has the owner's manual you can use. It's so easy to request a service. If you have an issue, you can click that, attach the media, all that stuff. Next up, another important one, roadside assistance. If you get a flat tire or your car isn't working, they have all these options to help you out. When I did use this option, I checked to see what they can do for us when we did have a flat tire. However, most of the times they just try to tow it to a local Tesla service center. When you scroll all the way to the bottom, it shows you the type of car you have. It shows you how many miles you have. It shows your VIN number, what software version you're on. If you click on release notes, it kind of gives you what the software update was, which is awesome because before I'd have to go to the Tesla screen to see what the update was. They also have the feature where you can view your warranty as well as your specs. So this is kind of the specs of my car. And then this shows your warranty. So battery warranty, 120,000 miles, drivetrain warranty, 120,000 miles, and basic vehicle warranty expires very soon for me because I'm almost at 50,000 miles. <laughs> So next up, we're gonna go ahead and talk about these icons up here. So the loot box icon, most people don't really need to worry about. However, if you have solar referrals, this is the place to go. Before you would get free supercharger miles if you referred somebody, but they got rid of that. Now it's just credits. It shows you how many supercharger miles you have if you have any. You could redeem it for the shop. So I thought it was kind of weird at first, but it's kind of cool, especially if you're interested in getting a Tesla, you can pretty much pay for a wall connector if you get credits. They have a lot of stuff here. They have wall connectors. You can get sipping glasses. You can get free supercharger miles with credits, t-shirts, CCS adapter, pet liner. And now you can even get the acceleration boost for a whopping 40,000 credits. Now an important one, and I recommend everybody who has a Tesla to do this right away, go to your profile icon. It's gonna show your name, it's gonna show the cars that you have. If you have a Tesla, you can get quick insurance quotes as well over here, here, and you can also charge your non-Tesla with certain superchargers in the area if you wanted to. The inbox is just any notifications that you have. Now, a really important thing is to go to account and you wanna make sure you enable two-factor authentication right here. So you wanna make sure you enable this. I highly recommend it because it keeps your profile secure. Under account, you have more settings, like you could change your contact info. You get a new credit card when you use the supercharger. It also shows you your order history, and you can also see your charging history to see where you charged and how much it costed you. Now, a lot of people didn't know is in the Tesla app, you can customize the notifications as well as sync stuff with your car under settings. Under settings, you can sync your calendar to your car, which is awesome. If you click on the vehicle, you can enable notifications for all this stuff. So they don't enable all these by default. You have to kind of go through it and customize it yourself. Some stuff that I have on, car alarm for sure. Charging started, I didn't have that on because I'm always charging it or I know when it's charging. Charging interrupted, charging complete is very important. Software update, Kevin OV protection, preconditioning complete. I like to have those on as well. News and events, it's just basic stuff if you want to be included in that. I don't like it, so I just keep that off. Tesla's never gonna invite me to anything anyways. If you decide to sell your car or if you're adding a used Tesla, you can do it here under add or remove products. And there you have it. I mean, there's the help icon here if you have any issues with that. But that's pretty much the basics of the Tesla app. One thing if you have multiple Teslas, you can easily swipe back and forth depending on where it is. So what you guys think of the app? I think the hardest part for me was getting that fifth icon on there, but I was able to do it. And if I'm able to do it, you can do it too. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.